Hi, right, welcome back YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Madden Money Shot, bringing you some more month 18 previews. All right, so I'm gonna be going over some month news today. Um, we have some uh, a really interesting listing of all 32 players that are gonna be available. If you don't know, if you pre-order the game, uh, you get to choose one player from your favorite team, which a lot of people, I'm not gonna pick the Eagles even though they're my favorite team. I'm gonna pick whatever player I think strategically will help me the best. Uh, also, if you order the, the GOAT edition, you get one of five uh, GOAT elite players. So you really have a chance to jumpstart your team with two really good uh, players uh, right there. Aside from, you also get typically get a couple packs to start off with um, from the game. I think depending on which game you order, you can get anywhere from five to 12 pro packs right out the gate. But either way, like I said, these guys are, these are the guaranteed cards that are gonna be good. So what you're looking at here is all 32 um, I'm not sure if they're elites. I think they might be like 85 overall elites. I don't expect them to be great for long. Uh, that's why it's important to know what you're getting into. This last year, when I picked, this is the first year I did month this last year, I picked the, um, you, you had something like this. I picked the Cardinals because you got an offensive and a defensive player. I got Julio Jones and Marcus Trufant. I, I regretted it right away. The second that I picked them and I saw their stats, I was like, man, they didn't last very long uh, on my lineup. So I think it's really important to pick wisely because you don't want to waste these these players. Um, so I'm going to go over the, all of them and I'm going to basically tell you which ones I think will actually be the players that will give you the longest lasting uh, positive effect to your team in both the um, the GOAT elites and, and the, uh, the regular elite that you get. I'll first go over the GOAT elite because there's less of them. There's only five that I know of. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to list them in order of how of how I think they uh, should be picked. I th so I'm going to start off with number five. Number five is Tom Brady. Uh, I think he's probably going to be the worst out of all of them, but I still think he's going to be one of the most picked just because he's on the cover. The reason I think he might be the worst out of all of them is just because he's he's kind of a limited uh, quarterback when it comes to Madden. Now the new engine and the new season is uh, is saying that there's something to do where they're changing the passing mechanics. Where now you can throw to a spot rather than throw to a receiver. So for all I know, that change in the game might put a bigger emphasis on accuracy of quarterbacks. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But I, I basically have uh, Tom Brady as the lowest ranked out of the GOAT elites because he's just, he's got the speed of an offensive lineman. Plus you only have one quarterback. I mean, if you, you're gonna eventually need to upgrade that quarterback anyway. So what are you gonna do with him? You're not gonna be able to transfer any of these guys most likely. Typically the free players that Madden gives you are never transferable. You can't trade them, you can't sell them. So they just basically waste away or you quick sell them on your team or maybe you put them in a, a, you know, in a set or something. But realistically, once they're on your team, these guys are not, you can't pick them and sell them and get value for them. So you gotta make sure you're picking somebody that's gonna play for your team. And if you upgrade over Tom Brady, which all, everybody's gonna do, you know what I'm saying? He's only gonna be like an 85, I would imagine. I don't think he's gonna be like a 99 elite right out the gate. They typically don't do that. Um, you know, what are you gonna do with a backup quarterback? There's no real value in a backup quarterback. So for, he, for me, he's number five. Number four, I got uh, Barry Sanders. This is kind of the same thought process as Tom Brady, where uh, you really only need one running back to get most of your carries. So once you upgrade over um, over Barry Sanders, maybe you get a, a newer version of him or something. What are you gonna do with the old Barry Sanders? So basically, you know, he's one of my favorite players too. I'm not a huge fan of Tom Brady, um, you know, but it, that's not why I picked him the lowest. I, I try to take that out of it and just look at these guys as their Madden value. And I think Barry Sanders, you know, you don't know what his ratings are gonna be, but I would imagine the highest thing that he's gonna offer is gonna be his agility because that's what he was known for. And that's not really that dominant in a running back in Madden, in my opinion. I mean, it's it's important, I guess. Um, but for me, you know what I'm saying, you can, you're gonna have to upgrade this back again. He gets a little bit more long-term value because you can always use multiple backs. You always need like a third down back and stuff like that. So um, he can probably get reps there. Uh, but for me, he's, he's probably gonna be um, another guy that you're gonna upgrade pretty quick. Number three, I got Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is, um, you know, these attributes are important. So if if he comes out and he's a, he's a you know 85 speed middle linebacker with like a 90 hit power, that might change things because that's a guy you could probably start for a very long time without having to upgrade. Uh, that being said, I don't think that his stats are going to be that great. I would expect the speed to be a little bit lower, and his hit power could probably not even crack the 90 spot. Um, but you know, I mean, take a look at what these guys have as far as ratings. Uh, before you pick them when the game comes out and you might you might uh, actually you know it might you might be surprised but as far as what I'm expecting 
Um, I do think that he would probably, you could probably use him as a middle linebacker for quite a while. If you run a 3-4 and you upgrade anyway, you would need a second middle linebacker anyway. If you run a 4-3 and you upgrade a middle linebacker, you can move him to an outside linebacker spot, left or right. So that's why I think there's a little bit more long-term value. You can find a spot for him on your team, even if you upgrade at the linebacker position. Number two, I got Jerry Rice. Now here's another guy, um, you know, you, you, everybody wants an elite receiver. I'm never, I was never a huge fan of Jerry. I mean, he's not known for his speed or his height or, you know, anything of that nature. He's a really solid receiver, obviously. He's the greatest receiver of all time. But as far as, you know, what you want, man, you want guys that are 6'5 or, you know, as fast as possible. And I don't think he's really known for either one of those things. So I think it'll be a nice, well-rounded receiver. But the reason that I have number two is because as your team progresses and gets better and you fill roster spots, you can move him from the number one receiver, which is what you're going to take, you know, draft him at right out the gate to the number two receiver as you get a better number one. And then if you get a better number one, you can move him into the slot. So you're going to have an opportunity for him to give you more value as the game goes along. Unlike some of these other players where once you get a starter to replace them, what are you going to do with them? Coming number one, who I think is probably the best um, GOAT elite that you can pick, and the one that I'm definitely going to pick is Deion Sanders. Prime time. This guy right here, he's known for a couple of things. He's known for being a hell of an athlete. So I would I would think it would almost be sacrilegious if they don't at least give him a 90 speed right out the gate. I don't think there should be a card in the game that Deion Sanders that's not at least a 90 speed. I mean, the guy ran like, what, like a 4-2 at the combine back in his day or rumors that it was faster so i can't imagine them going lower than that 90 speed is good enough to go at least a couple of months through madden as your number one corner uh if he has that like i say he's also an electric punt returner too which is great value and then once again just like the jerry rice theory once you get corners that um, are better or faster or taller or whatever you can move him to the number two when he's competent then you can move him to the slot make him a blitzing slot corner and be competent i mean he has way more value uh, than any of these other positions just because for number one getting corners is, is one of the harder things to do in this game they're, they're typically more expensive getting really you know high rated elite corners are probably one of the toughest positions to fill and you can get one for free so my recommendation is if you you know if you're watching this video and you don't know who to pick Pick Primetime as your elite GOAT uh, card because I think he's definitely going to give you the most long-term value. All right, so then moving on, we got, um, you know, we got the uh, 32. These are the free elites you get uh, for pre-ordering the game. Um, I'm going to take the same, you know, this, the same concept and apply it to this, cornerbacks. You know what I'm saying? You get more, more value in cornerbacks. The only problem is there are not a lot of cornerbacks on this board. You got Xavier Rhodes and Richard Sherman. Uh, that's it. Out of all these guys, the only two cornerbacks that you're going to be able to pick up out of this, out of all 32 teams, is those two guys. And when I look at it, Richard Sherman, I'll tell you right now, I guarantee he's probably going to be like an 85 speed. If this is the lowest base elite, they don't really give Richard Sherman very high speeds unless it's a really high card. So I can't go that route. I can't go Richard Sherman. I mean, the height's great, um, but I just can't go with a slow corner. You're going to get beat sooner rather than later. Uh, and Xavier Rhodes, I have a feeling he would probably max out like an 87, 80, 88 speed for this type of card. So to me, these cornerbacks are off the board because I don't think they're going to last. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't really think any of the receivers are going to be great. Uh, we can go over all them. We got Sammy Watkins up top, um, who's kind of known for his speed. Julio Jones, like I said last year, Julio Jones is known for his speed, but I picked him last year and he was only like an 87 speed. It wasn't, it wasn't anything spectacular, but he's still a good pickup because he is tall. Odell Beckham, I wouldn't go that route because he's not even that. Same thing with Sammy Watkins. Jarvis Landry, he's not tall. Uh, A.J. Green, at least he's tall. I think you can go. If you want a tall possession receiver type, A.J. Green, uh, Julio Jones would be really good picks. But I wouldn't expect speed out of any of these receivers. Julian Edelman, another guy is going to be slow. Uh, Amari Cooper, you know, like I said, these guys, these are the base elites. They're not going to last long. Uh, so don't look for speed in them. They're not going to be very fast. Uh, other than that, quarterbacks are pretty good. I probably, I might go with Andrew Luck. He's been the quarterback that I've used pretty much all year. He's typically around an 80 speed. I don't know if his, his, his lowest elite card will be or not. Uh, Blake Bortles isn't bad. Same same vein, really. He's, he's typically around an 80 speed. So I could probably take one of these quarterbacks and make them last throughout, you know, a good half of the season just because, um, you know, I mean, accuracy is really important. You have guys like Matt Stafford, Jameis Winston, um, I'm not sure which of these guys are going to be the most accurate. Phillip Rivers, maybe. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is probably one of the best ones uh, on this whole board, regardless of position. Um, I mean, he's the, he's probably the, might be the best quarterback in the league right now. I don't know. You still got, you know, obviously Tom Brady's still 
still on the cover and all that. But um, out of the guys here, Aaron Rodgers stands out to me as a guy who might be like an 80 speed elite and uh, have all the accuracies you need that you can probably use him as a quarterback throughout um, you know most of the season. And then there's also Carson Wentz who you know I wasn't a huge fan of his card last year. Good player though. Um, I didn't mention Antonio Brown either. He might be the fastest receiver on this list, um, but still, I mean, like he would have value in the future as a slot guy for sure. Um, Antonio Brown for me, but you know, still not somebody I would take. Then we got running backs. We got a couple of running backs here. Ezekiel Elliott, um, you know, he's a really good player. Jordan Howard, I think you could go with one of these running backs. David Johnson, uh, some top-notch running backs here. So you know, that's something to think about. I think you could possibly use one of them for a while. Carlos Hyde, I would go his route. He's probably going to be slow. Uh, not a lot of tight ends on here. The only tight end I see, actually, I missed DeMarco Murray, too. DeMarco Murray, another guy, might not be too fast. Um, David Johnson, I would imagine, would have good speed. If I were to go running back here, it would go, it would go Elliott, maybe Howard, or David Johnson. Jordan Howard, a lot of people were really going on about how great his cards were last year. Um, and like I said, the only tight end we got is Jordan Reed. Uh, tight ends are so easy to find. Um, I, I can't say I would go that route. There, there's so many good tight ends, even lower rated cards that perform. Defensive players, you know, got a lot of pass rushers. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of a pass rusher. I could go Vaughn Miller um, and be happy. I mean, he's, you know, he'll definitely be a, an 80 plus speed guy. Um, Jamie Collins, you know, not too bad. I can't say I'm a huge fan of his though. Aaron Donald, we got, um, you know, a lot of really good defensive players to choose from. But honestly, you really got to go, um, you know, I, I think I really got to go. Justin Houston's a really good one. J.J. Watt, Terrell Suggs. Terrell Suggs will probably be slow. I'm not a huge fan of J.J. Watt. Aaron Donald. Um, you know, there's so many guys to choose from. Uh, Jamie Collins. That's pretty much the board. I mean, there's only like five or six defensive players. I'm a defensive first kind of guy, but none of these guys are really amazing me. I mean, Luke Kukley, maybe. I don't know. I could. He, a decent user linebacker. Um, Von Miller, like I said, pass rush is important. I might go that route. I would hate to go offense, offense, or defense, defense, since you only get two free players. Um, but there's some really solid options. So, uh, so that's it. Some more mutt news, uh, some strategy building here. Um, if you guys want to see more, you know, updates, let me know in the uh, comment section or hit the like button, and I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Mad Money Shit Out. Hey, you made it to the end of the video, which means either you like the content you're watching or you fell asleep halfway through. Either way, if you hit the subscribe button, you can catch all my videos now releasing daily. Thanks for watching.